Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Robin McKay here. This is your weather report for the actualization zone. And it's Tuesday, May 31st, 2022. So this is for the week starting yesterday. But here in the US, we were on holiday. So I thought I would just get a fresh start today as we are entering this new unofficial time of summer here in the U.S. and maybe for you too. Maybe you can follow along with me as I set the tone for this golden summer, this golden season really that is upon us, regardless of where you are in the world, which hemisphere you're on. This is an opportunity for the next about 90 days or so just to really tune into your golden summer, your golden season, we'll call it, for those of you who are international in, in the Southern Hemisphere. So today, as usual, I love to just go through kind of the energies, the un, the un, sometimes unconscious, definitely non-physical energies that are influencing us this week. And this isn't <clears throat> just so we're clear. I don't, I know a little bit about astrology, but this isn't an astrological reading at all. This is just me tuning in for myself, for my clients and for you on what we can expect this week. And one of the things that I've been thinking about this week is how can we use this week as a portal, as a portal for the things we most want to do to be and to experience, as a portal for the, the um, person we want to actualize, that version of ourselves who is the highest level of leadership that we have for ourselves, who is the, the one who has is living out the vision that we have placed in our hearts. So that really, that's one of the major themes this week is using it as a portal. And if you can just imagine this round and open space right in front of you, you can just step through it. It's very simple to do that right now. There's no resistance. There's no, it's, it's a pretty effortless process actually to be able to step through your portal and onto a new timeline, onto a new way of being working, engaging with yourself and with what's going on around you in this world. So using this week as a portal, and in fact, I keep on being drawn to this. I drew this card last night. This is from a different, I think this is from the Starseed deck, but here's your, here's your portal. So if you can just imagine just going through that portal and into the timeline that you've been most hoping for and dreaming of. I like to call it the and better timeline or the golden timeline. The thing about jumping timelines is really pretty simple, but it's also something I think that I, I used to think that when I jumped a timeline that I should just automatically have actualized the thing that I most hoped for and desired. And I've had a couple of those experiences where literally I can feel a palpable difference between an old timeline where nothing seemed to be working and I was pushing and gritting and frustrated and all those kind of very human experiences, jumping timelines into this timeline where everything just dropped in for me. Early in my career as an entrepreneur, I had that experience where I had this had an offer that I made and within about 24 hours of making the offer, I had it not just filled, but overfilled. I had the offer overfilled, actually. And so even if you're not an entrepreneur, maybe you can relate to that, where one day things are just going along as they've always gone along, and the next day everything has changed for you. And certainly those are timeline jumps. But what I like to think about timeline jumps for us is that it actually just places us on a new path, and you still have to walk the path. But the path is higher ground. The path is something that is easy, joyful, delightful for us. And it just is an easier route to actualize those experiences and, and that version of ourselves that we most want to experience. So I hope that makes sense in terms of timeline jumping. Certainly you can have instant manifestation on a timeline jump, but I find most usually there's a little bit, still a little bit of a lag and when you just understand that it has just basically, I used to golf kind of a lot when I was a kid. And I learned early on that if I corrected my club before I swung, even if it was just a degree or two, 
or if I tilted it forward a little bit more or a little bit back. It changed the whole trajectory, loft, distance of the ball. And so I want us to think about timeline jumps like that too. It's just a little bit tiny course correction, which has a big, <clears throat> a big outcome later on. All right. So that's the first thing. So let me see what else is out there. I'm excited this month because we are launching the McKay Academy of Actualization. So excited about that. That is, that's been about 22 years in the making. And if what we're going to be doing in that academy is I'm going to be teaching you the methodologies that I've developed over the course of the last 22 years that have enabled me to create miracle after miracle in my own life, with my career, with my relationships, with where I live, with how I live my life, with the, the influence and impact I've been able to have on the, on the world. And the contributions that I've been able to make are largely, I would say, due to this actualization method. And it's also the method that I use in all, with all of my private clients. Um, but this is the first time I'm taking people behind the scenes and showing you actually how to implement the methodology for yourselves. Because I know more people need this methodology than just me and my private clients. So I want to make this accessible and available to more people. So if that is something that you're interested in learning more about, if you're already like kind of at the edge of your seat saying, oh my gosh, I want to be part of that, go to drrobinmckay.com forward slash waitlist. And this gets you on the early notification information when we release that. And if it lands for you, you are certainly invited to apply for the, the academy and to join us if you want to learn the methodologies that I've been using for the last two decades. Holy smokes. All right. So what do we have here? Um, the other part of this energy reading for this week is I just drew the ever unfolding rose. The ever unfolding rose. By the way, this is the um, Work Your Light deck by Rebecca Campbell. I love her decks so much. Love her decks. Uh, this is being cracked open. Okay, so when we talk about being cracked open, we know that everything that we want to actualize, everything that we want to do, to be, to have, to experience is outside of our comfort zone. If you want to stay in your comfort zone, you're going to experience the same thing over and over and over again. It's kind of like Groundhog Day. But if you start looking at yourself, your life, your heart as an ever unfolding rose, you understand that you're cracking open to what's next. And it can be uncomfortable, that cracking open process, first of all. But here's the thing. And by the way, we can use almost anything to crack our hearts open. We can use burnout. We can use traumatic events. We can, but easier than that, easier than burning out, less painful than traumatic events is to make a decision, to make a conscious, clear, psychologically mature decision to crack yourself open. Because when you make that clear, conscious, psychologically mature decision to crack yourself open, you don't get to be a victim. And I don't, I don't actually believe that any of us are victims. I know that there are true victims in this world. I know that. But I do also know that when you are on a conscious creator pathway, the opportunity to behave as a victim when you're not goes away entirely because you're taking responsibility for yourself. You're leading yourself. You're taking responsibility for your life in a way that you've never done before. So one of the ways that you can shift very quickly into taking responsibility for your experiences is to make the decision to crack yourself open, but then to also understand that any time something happens, happens in your life, positive or negative, painful or joyful, it's happening for you. And you can ask yourself, how is this happening for me? I wonder how this is happening for me. You can't be in a conscious state of wonderment, of curiosity, and maintain the this is happening to me perspective. It's not possible. There's a lot of tension there anyway, if you try to maintain 
the why is this happening to me attitude while you're also trying to practice curiosity, openness, and asking a question like, how is this happening for you? So this is one of the, the shifts that we're going to be making this week is just anytime anything pops up, how is this happening for me? We have, I just heard the trucks come up the street. They're repaving our streets this week and there's some inconvenience in terms of how we're getting in and out of our driveways and where people are parking in order to accommodate the street crews and so on. And so I could be in a place of well, grumpy and, and edgy and frustrated and confused. There are a lot of people who are confused about this, um, even though the instructions are pretty clear, they just choose to be confused. So I'm just taking the approach of how is this happening for me? Well, I know that in a couple of days that it will be done and we'll have a new beautiful paved street in front of our house. But beyond that, I have to wonder how else is this happening for me? Something as simple as that. How is the red light happening for me, not to me? Do you see? And if you can practice that in the simple things, in the daily things, the common things, when something more on a grand scale happens, you can ask that same question because you're in the habit of practicing being in curiosity about that. How is it happening for me? All right. So the ever unfolding rose is the other piece of the puzzle this week. And then let's just see here. Do you guys use Oracle decks? I'd love to know if you use Oracle decks, put in the comments, which ones are your favorite. And if you don't use Oracle decks, why not? Why not? Why not try? Oh, here's a good one. This is interesting. It's another portal, actually. It's come out of the cave. Come out of the cave and share your voice. So I think last week on my LinkedIn live broadcast, which you can probably, it'll be right next door to this one on YouTube, actually. Um, it's the one where I talk about how I set the tone for a golden summer or something like that, but it's about setting the tone for the summer. Um, I talked about this concept, this idea that has been brought forward into the corporate space, which is bring your whole self to work. And I think that this is one of the most important initiatives that the diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging folks are bringing in and emphasizing. I really do. And I was thinking about that for myself and I was like, okay, if I brought my whole self to work, because, you know, I work with people in the corporate space. I work with physicians, with healthcare providers. I work with engineers and people in tech. But what would that look like for Robin to bring her whole self into those spaces? And it occurred to me that my whole self, my best self, is my intuitive self. My emotionally intelligent self. Which a lot of people don't understand and are certainly not comfortable with. And so this, for me, this share your voice, this portal of coming out of the cave, come out of the cave and share your voice for me. And perhaps for you too, because if you're in the actualization zone, or if you're just in my sphere of, of life, you will know that I place a high value, the highest value on our intuition, the highest value on our emotional intelligence. And so one of the ways that we can start bringing our whole best selves into work, especially if you are an emotionally intelligent or intuitive physician, especially if you're an emotionally intelligent and intuitive engineer, scientist, attorney, any of the fields that we've trained in, right? How do we do that? Well, one of the ways that I believe that we're actually responsible for shifting is no longer tolerating having our gifts called woo woo or touchy feely or too far out there and to no longer be apologetic for having these gifts. In other words, there's enough gaslighting going out there without us gaslighting ourselves. So one of the ways that you can start using your voice as an intuitive, intelligent leader, regardless of what field you're in, is to stop apologizing for being both intuitive and intelligent. 
and just say what you think. You will become so much more effective in your work when you just say what you think. Without couching, without apologizing, without framing, without worrying about petting people so that they don't get upset by what you say. But just say what you think without apology. Now, I'm not saying you have to be rude about it. I'm not saying you have to be coarse about it. But you certainly don't have to also be apologetic about it or asking questions. Coming in with a question rather than a statement is a habit that we have gotten into over our generation, certainly, but past generations of women as well who are in the workplace. So asking yourself the question, this work of how can I, how can I share my voice even more? How can I bring my best voice to work? And here's a, here's a clue. When you think about bringing your best voice to work, inevitably, there are going to be opportunities for you to practice this. So what I want you to pay attention to is when you're in a meeting, either a one-on-one -on -one or in a group meeting or whatever it is, I want you listening to your thinking. I want you paying attention to your thinking this week. So somebody else is talking during the meeting and you're listening, you're processing, you're thinking, thinking, thinking. You're, you're thinking about options. You're thinking about opportunities. You're thinking about solutions. You're thinking about maybe how bored you are because they won't stop talking, whatever it is. And don't tell me I'm not the only one who thinks that. But whatever it is, there's going to be a thought or two that comes forward that you're going to want to set aside talk about later, or you're just going to almost ignore and not bring forward. Instead of doing that this week, make a decision to say what you think. It can only advance the conversation. It can only add to it. It can only contribute. Sometimes when I have something that I need to say, I'll frame it like I need to say something. I'll just say that. I have something to contribute here. I have a really great idea here. Would you like to hear it? I, I just thought of a solution. I just had a light bulb moment. Who wants to hear it? It's a great way to frame things if you have to. So no more, no more apologizing because that's your part of your intuition. That's part of the voice of your soul. And I wrote this early, I wrote this last week on my Facebook page. I said, it's my observation that the major cause of burnout is a disconnection from your intuition, which is the voice of your soul. That is an inside job, reconnecting with your intuition. And it comes from listening to yourself and speaking aloud what yourself has to say without apology, without framing it necessarily. But just come in with that. And I want you to just notice this week how, how you feel, what changes, what shifts you experience as a result of just saying what you think. Sometimes I've had to say, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but dot, 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 and then I'll say it. Sometimes if it's in a one-on-one -on -one setting and I've had a thought come up a couple of times, something that's occurred to me, and I'm a little bit worried about ruffling feathers, I'll just ask. I've had a thought come up a couple times. Would you like to hear my thought? And give somebody an opportunity to say yes or no to it. If they say no, then that's fine. Most likely they're going to say yes. And then you can say, okay, I'm going to say it. And then we can talk about what your thoughts are about it after I say it. Is that okay? And they'll agree to that, of course. And then you've expanded the conversation. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so there are your, there's your reading for the week. Use this week as a portal. Think about your heart, your mind, your consciousness as an ever unfolding rose, cracking yourself open to the possibilities of what is next. Remembering that things are happening for you and not to you. So you're discarding the victim mentality. And then the last thing is share your voice. Pay attention to what you're thinking. And when you think it, say it. No more hemming and hawing. No more dilly-dallying. I've been saying that a lot lately. 
it's time. It's time to speak your truth. It's time to share your voice. It's time to come out of the cave and own your intuition, even if you're not quite sure about how to do that, because that will even unfold for you. Your, in, your intellect is always going to say, well, I don't know how. Your intuition always has a solution. So that's all I have for you today. I'm Dr. Robin McKay. I will see you next time on your weather report. And in the meantime, leave your comments. Let me know what landed for you, what you're going to focus on this week as a result of listening to this weather report. And I will see you next week.